The Water's Morning Scramble, glad to have you here, and the mayor is in. Good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. And it's study session day, right? It is study session day. So I guess yes. I, I haven't talked to you since uh, <laughs> the last council meeting, I guess, which was last week. Yeah, yeah. it was good. I watched. I didn't watch all of it, but uh, I watched the first hour or so, and then I I, I fast forwarded through some stuff. But it, uh, it was a little shorter than the meeting the week before. Um, is that right? It was pretty. Yeah. This one was pretty long. It was, but the we- the meeting on the thirteenth was really long. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but um, basically, uh, I, I liked the, and I think that was a headline in the paper. Maybe a, you know, basically we're looking on a draft to put in your pocket in case it was needed. Yeah, and, and you're just looking ahead. So we are, yeah, and and um, Councilor Wedlake and Councilor Jalowski have been really um, instrumental in making sure we're kind of prepared for what that next step needs to be. I really appreciate their. Um, time and, and effort on that uh, issue, especially around face masks, because it, it you know it's it's a tough issue at this point. We we know that people wearing face masks in more situations is a is a um, clearly helpful in preventing the spread of COVID nineteen. Um, but you know there's all kinds of extenuating circumstances at this point, and so it becomes kind of difficult to figure out what the best policy is, and and that's conversation I've had with a lot of people, whether it's people who don't want fast wear face masks or people who do want to wear face masks, is that, you know, it's not always just as easy as saying, well, this is yeah. the right thing to do um, because that right thing to do becomes different. You know, that, that calculus of what's the right thing to do here becomes different uh, depending on lots of different circumstances. And, and it's, I, I think, really helpful in Stillwater right now that we have a council who we haven't always agreed on these issues, um, but you know whether it's COVID stuff or zoning or you know development projects or all that kind of stuff. But they're they are to a to a person uh, thoughtful and you know think about these issues deeply and and try to consider what's the best policy given the circumstances. And that's that's really the best we can hope for. You know, uh, I come from a big family, and we're having to deal with some things right now. And there's six siblings, right? Yep. And I was talking to my brother yesterday, and I did say, I didn't I didn't compare us to the city council, <laughs> but I did say, considering how many of us there are, yep. we're in agreement on, uh, you know, we're doing all right. Yep. <laughs> because when you're, when you're dealt with... Uh, having to make decisions on, on certain things that are, and you don't know, uh, just like kind of like what you're going through. And yeah. we don't know for sure what we're dealing with. Um, it, it's hard to be, and it's impossible. And you shouldn't all be in agreement on everything. And, you know, the what you said there, I think, is the most important thing in any of those situations, whether you're in city council or family or whatever right. it is. Like, recognizing that we don't necessarily, none of us necessarily knows the best course of action. None of us is an expert none of us has all of the information that's needed to be right. able to make the right decision right i mean if each of us can can hold on to that little bit of perspective to say you know here's what i think here's my position here's what i understand but i also recognize that i am not the only one who's involved here i'm not the only one who has information i'm not the only one who's looking at this and being o- open to having discussions and being open to people disagreeing and you know that that I think is what gets lost first a lot of times in these discussions is that we get so entrenched in our position on something right. that we're not willing to listen, not willing to understand, not willing to even concede that I might not be right. Did, uh, have you uh, – well, I agree completely. And, and, and because there's a tendency in any case to try to win the moment. We're mm-hmm. all competitive, right? Sure. And I'm going to prove to you that yeah. I'm right rather than actually want to find the right solution. You're yep. busy – have, have you ever gotten in your car and, and, and gone through the meeting in your head and said, you know, they do have maybe a better point than I thought? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I do that at the meeting. Um, it, well, sure. You know, yeah. I mean, right. Uh, and certainly, yeah, later and, and having conversations with folks, um, you know, throughout the week or, or, you know, whenever there's an issue. You know, we I can't remember which meeting it was at, honestly, mm-hmm. the 13th or the 20th, because we talked about some zoning stuff about those, those meetings. Um, I think I made a comment on the 13th that it was nice to be dealing with yeah. contentious <laughs> zoning issues, right, <laughs> which are much more in line with what the council has done traditionally and what our traditional role is instead of public health. Um, but, you know, those kinds of issues are, are very – I mean, there's so many different perspectives and there's so many different points that can be made. And, and, you know, there are times where I think I go into it thinking, 
well, this is how I think this issue is going to come out. This is what my viewpoint on the issue is at this point, having done the research I've done, and then a, a speaker at the meeting or something staff says at the meeting or something another counselor says at the meeting, um, you know, changes my perspective a little bit. And I think, oh, well, okay, that's actually a really good point. Hadn't considered that in my previous deliber deliberation and, and have either changed my mind there right. or at least ex acknowledged to say, well, okay, well, I still think this is the way, the best way to do this, but I, I certainly understand that that's a concern and, um, you know, something we maybe we can try to figure out down the line. So it, it yeah, I mean, it happens a lot. It is hard. And, and you know, uh, and I, I, I grew up, uh, my dad was a school administrator and part of being a school administrator is you have to pass bond issues. Yep. And it was always, is it best for the community or with some people, what's best for me? Yep. And you would always run into somebody, my kids are grown. Why would I have to worry about it? Yep. Why should I do this? And so that mindset of what's best for me is not necessarily for the better good. And so, and, and we're seeing that, I think, with this. You can almost, uh, okay, if we can put aside, okay, what works best for me is not necessarily what's best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a... Uh, a wonderful life lesson for every and it's hard for all of us I mean, in anything. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it is. Uh, I think that's um, sort of a core principle of living in a society of, of a community, right? Is trying to figure out what are you know things that really all I'm cared about is myself. All I care about here is is what's best for me, right. and what, what how do I look at that from a perspective of what's best for the community? And sometimes, you know, sometimes there are issues that really personally what this in this situation i have to be most focused on what's best for me or my family i mean there there are times sure. when that's that's the case and um there are times when you can step back and say well yeah it would be better for me if we went this direction but it's not really that much worse for me it's not that big of a sacrifice if i if i there move this yeah. other direction and let the let the community also have some benefit here and that that's a i mean it's just so difficult it's a it's a difficult calculus for all of us to to try to weigh you know, how much am I giving up? How much am I sacrificing for the good of somebody else? Um, you know. And, and, and in some cases, what's best for you, okay, being a being a family with young yep. kids here, mirrors what's best for the community. Sure. Because, I mean, you can put yourself in a situation others can't. Yeah. You do have kids in school that are going to be taking part in uh, plays and bands and mm -hmm. ball games and stuff. And so your family mirrors so many. It does. Uh, and so, for so, in some ways, it's not selfish. I think. I mean, it, you know what I mean? Sure. Well, and, and I'm not talking about the COVID or anything like that. Yeah. But in just decisions, what what would you can you can relate because your family mirrors so many others. Yeah, uh, yeah. That that certainly you know if you if your interests line up with with a, a big chunk of the rest of the population, then that is helpful to try to to be able to see that perspective. But there there are also I think one of the things as certainly as an elected official. You have to be even more cognizant of of not allowing, you know, just your personal uh, bias or your your you know this is what's best for me and right. people like me. Um, True. You know, I, True. I, I do. I mean, I it's certainly helpful to have that perspective and to be someone who, I mean, you don't want your elected officials. I think one of the things that that people get upset about, especially at the federal level or the national politics level, is that the people who represent us at, in national politics look very little like us. You know, not just from a demographic standpoint, but these are not folks who are trying to make a living every day right. and feed a family. And you know, they're they're many of them have been in politics for forty years. Their you know, their healthcare works different. Exactly. All these things, yeah. right? And, and that's a you know, and, and that can be very difficult if you if you've got someone representing you who doesn't seem to understand anything about what life is like for the majority of the people they represent. And so, it is certainly. I think helpful in a representative uh, democracy to, to to find and elect people who have that uh, have a little bit more in common with with the the uh, the folks that they're representing on a day to day basis. But even then, you know, representatives have to. I think if 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 people who are elected take their job seriously, they they do recognize that hey, I'm not just elected to represent the people who have kids and a family like me or who have you know, these kinds of concerns that I have, I'm elected to represent all of these people. And I've got to take my time to consider those other viewpoints and to consider what it's like for somebody else. You know, for me, you know, there's a large contingent of, of retired 
um, folks in, in Stillwater, right. right? I don't know what that's like. I'm, I'm looking forward to it at some <laughs> point way down the road. Um, but, you know, I have to be able to, to talk to and understand and try to represent the interests of, of, you know, a retired couple in Stillwater just as much as I do, you know, those other young families in town. Let me ask if you think this is an advantage, because and I'm just uh, I'm going on the fact I've known you what four or five years now, yep. something like that, and I don't think you are a, a person of great political ambition, really. <laughs> Does that that's make sense? True. Yes, that because is true. Because when I are you going to run again? I mean, he won't answer me, so <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if you know, but I think I think that's a good I think that's a strength, because if 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 somebody is blinded by political ambition then their decisions are made on how, I mean, it's going to, just like if you work for a company and you want to climb the ladder. Yeah. You don't treat the boss like, you know, you just do make concessions. Does that make any sense? And since I don't think you're trying to climb and you don't want to be the president of the United States anytime soon. No. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, I, I think it adds to integrity there because you're actually focused on the job with, rather than your career. I I. I appreciate that, and I think I think that's true. Absolutely, I do. I mean, I, I, you know, from my personal perspective, I want to vote for people who are not, um, who don't seem to want the job at all costs. Right. Right. I mean, you know that that there, there's a danger, and like you said, in any job, right, in in sure. corporate environments, and wherever you are, I mean, you can tell there those those people that you work with who they don't really care about the day to day. They don't really care about helping you know, other folks around them necessarily, they're just interested in that next promotion. They're just trying to, to climb the ladder or get to this sun spot where they think that, you know, they're going to be able to make enough money or whatever it is. And and that's true of politics too, for sure. And and probably worse in politics, I, I would concede. But I think there's a lot of a lot of folks in, in you know, being represented, representatives or being in, in elected positions who, who have that same mindset. They want to do a good job in the job. They're not necessarily there just to continue to, to climb the ladder or to get to that next seat or, or whatever it is. And, um, but I think that is important. I think it's an important quality of people we elect to offices, uh, for them to understand this is the job here. And now this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is, you know, to represent the people well at a city council level or at a state representative level or at a state office level. If you're always looking ahead to the next, how do I position myself for my next election? Um, you're not going to make the best decisions for the people you represent in the moment. You're just not. Let me ask you, um, I think I asked Trish Ranson this the other day, because I, I, w- with some politicians you're seeing now, both sides, not picking out, where I'm guessing it can be addictive. Oh, yeah. But uh, And suddenly you're being stopped in the aisle at the, the supermarket every time you go would be my guess almost, yep. because somebody, hey, you got a minute. And being important can be addictive we all want to be important um do you feel as a i don't think i think you're the mayor of the city i don't think you're a politician (laughs) but do do you uh understand the the addiction that some people seem to have oh yeah absolutely absolutely i mean it's it's um you never had msnbc calling you up before no and and i didn't have people recognizing me you know before and even you know even when that's negative it's still there's something to it where people go, oh, you know, people know who I am. You right. know, I mean, that there, there is absolutely, I, I think any of us would, would have um, a similar reaction to, to that kind of um, just being noticed. Right? Sure. You we know, all want to be. We all want to be right. noticed and, and for people who know who we are and who, you know, to people, for people to think what we do is important. And, and so I, I absolutely think there is a, just a, you know, it's fame at, at a very, very right. <laughs> small level, but it's the same idea, right? I mean, it's the same thing when you talk about celebrities and, you know, sure. what happens to celebrities once they, you know, too many people know who they are. And, I mean, you, you do, there is a sense of, of that notoriety or, or recognition that, that is something that you you kind of get addicted to or you think, you know, you end up thinking, well, it's nice. So it, I don't know if I want to go back to being anonymous or, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Uh, certainly can see that. And, and then there's the, you know, there's the, I, I like having a say in, in issues. You know, I like it when I like being, ad, someone to call me up and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing. What do you think about it? Right. You know, being, um, being in the know and, and, you know, being someone that other people 
uh, ask for advice, you know, that those are nice feelings. Sure. I mean, there's just no, uh, there's no reason to, to lie about it. I mean, that's and true. And the hard thing in life, I think, when people start giving up or getting depressed is when you're, you don't have a purpose for that day. Mm-hmm. And even though the purpose may on some days be overwhelming and daunting and all, all this, yep. uh, we all need that. Yep. And that, I, I think, you know, you asked about running again, and uh, I do have to make a decision here in the next couple of months. I mean, I've got the opportunity to one, run for one more term as mayor um, in Stillwater, which the election will be next next spring, uh, actually February, I think. Um, and I, I truly haven't figured out what I really want to sure. do because, you know, part of me, when I think about this, I think about, if I wanted to do, if I want to do it again, if I feel like yes, I want to run again, is it is it because of the right reasons, right? Is it because I really feel like I can help? Is it feel like I can I can, you know, uniquely provide some service that that maybe somebody else can't, uh, or is it because I kind of like being the mayor, you know? And I I certainly don't want to. I will tell you this: given the last year and a half, uh, those <laughs> those nice feelings are not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we both like history, and um, um, Lyndon Johnson, for example, yep. his whole life, if, you, if, you, if you've if you read books on Lyndon I Johnson, have. whatever, he was motivated. He, he was a go-getter. He yep. wanted to be the top guy everywhere, and then he became the president of the United States, and because of Vietnam, that was his pandemic, yep. if you will, uh, you know, he announced he will not be running for another term. Yep. And it was just, I think it got to there, and... Uh, Maybe the fact that he didn't have the answers, maybe whatever it was, he actually declined something he'd been striving his whole life for, yeah. and that's to continue as president. And I, I yeah, I, I actually have read some about Lyndon Johnson. My dad's a big history buff, and he's given me a couple books uh, because Johnson's a great example of that. Um, was really good at his job. I mean, as a representative, I mean, he, you know, got things done, yeah. you know, things that, No matter what it took. You know, I mean, in terms of even though he was personally not the most enlightened guy on the planet, he helped push through a lot of civil rights le- legislation. You know, I mean, he, he did things that were positive for the country and because he had just a burning political ambition. And I think you, you're right. You see in his story that you kind of get to the top of that ladder and you go, oh, well, I don't know. I'm right. not sure this is what I thought it was going right, to be. Right. I'm not sure this is worth it, right? I'm not sure I can, you know, I want to continue to do this. And because, uh, again, that when you're focused just on the accumulation of that power or the accumulation of that status, you you can lose sight of why you're doing it in the first place. And, and you know, people do. Yeah. We'll, we'll start calling you by your initials here. <laughs> WBJ or yeah, whatever. Right. <laughs> WHJ? Yeah, there you go. I don't think well, it, it doesn't flow it like doesn't, that. Yeah, we have to work on it. Have a good, have a good so you plan. haven't decided yet, but I really I appreciate haven't. your candor there because it, everybody wants to be everybody wants to be important, yeah, and and, and useful, and you also want to contribute. And I, yeah, I, I absolutely, and that that's from my you know when people ask me about even before the pandemic, like why would you want to be the mayor? I mean, it's a volunteer job; you get paid yeah, hundred bucks a month. Um, it, it's not uh, there's not a whole lot of what you would consider benefit to it. Um, and, you know, f- I don't own a bunch of property in town. I don't have a business that I'm... There's no agenda. You know, I mean, there's not a whole lot in it for me in, in, in a material perspective. And uh, But, but you you know, I I feel like I can help. I feel like I have a, a particular skill set and, and right. a, you know, a, a way of handling things and a thoughtfulness or, you know, the, the ability to, 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 to lead in this manner that would be helpful for the community. And if people agree with me and they want to put me, my name in a ballot, then, you know, I, I think that's a, if you can help, you should, right? I mean, I think that goes for all of us. Right. If there's something we can contribute to our, to our community, we should contribute it. And so, you know, that's always been the motivation for me to do it. Um, but, you know, when you weigh that against the difficulty it creates in a family and in a business, and, yeah. you know, I mean, I have a job and I have, it's, it's, uh, it's sometimes tough to look at it and go, I think I can help, but man, it, it costs a lot. It really does. And I don't know that uh, there's um, any of the living mayors around here can, they can relate and they can try to empathize, but the pandemic has been unique. It has been unique, but I mean, all of, you know, I mean, Mayor Noble had to deal with plenty of stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, she was mayor during the parade crash tragedy and 
True. Um, I mean, that was a very difficult time. You know, that's that's a fair point. Mayor Everybody Bartley does dealt have... with quite a bit of controversy. I mean, he was I'm pretty sure he was mayor during the like the oil drilling yeah, the, concerns. He, and, he he was the earthquake mayor, yeah, really. Yeah. So and so I mean, it's it's not been it's not an easy job for anybody. It, it isn't. That's and true. I, and and I talk to those folks every once in a while, right? And then I hear, you know, they. I think they're all happy that they weren't the mayor during the pandemic, for sure. But, um, but you know, they understand what the sacrifices are and what, what you have to deal with and that sort of thing. Yeah. So a good segment. Uh, we're going to take a time out. We'll uh, look ahead at what's coming up here.